Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The story of Superstorm Sandy in Amityville is not just about a disaster of mammoth proportions and all the problems it caused. It's also about how Christians of various stripes came to the rescue. And it's also about how St. Paul's congregation was a leader in the community, not only offering their prayers, but also their time and energy, their resources and cheerfulness, and the presence of God in their, respect, in their response. In the words of the psalmist in Psalm 100, we made a joyful noise to the Lord we serve the Lord and his people in need with gladness. For many years in my pastoral ministry, I had seen disasters, but always it was from the side of providing care and assistance to those who were the victims. I served two churches in the inner city of St. Louis in the beginning years of my ministry and helped many homeless and downtrodden people. I saw many people face homelessness and, and disasters of various kinds. I tried to help them. Later on, I directed programs for Lutheran World Relief in Africa and in Asia. And the disasters I saw in those continents were many times worse. Homelessness was accompanied by famine and starvation, by deadly diseases and military coups, and all on a very massive scale. Then there were refugees. Now, the UN calls them displaced persons. And I encountered probably more than 100,000 refugees in my five years at Lutheran World Relief, in places like Ethiopia and Tanzania, in Jordan, and in Vietnam. In all these situations, though, I was trying to help the needy, the victims. But a year ago, when Sandy struck, <clears throat> I was all alone in our home up on our second floor, braving the storm. My wife, Rowena, was out in Indiana helping our daughter's family move into their new home. And Sandy hit our home hard. The day after, I realized that life was going to change big time. We could no longer live in our home our neighborhood looked like it was trashed. And the police and TV news helicopters patrolled overhead like you knew this was serious stuff. Suddenly I realized that the tables now had turned. Now I was the one who needed help. I was homeless. I was a displaced person. I felt overwhelmed. I didn't know how to deal with this. A while after these thoughts went through my head, who do you think came walking through our yard with all the sandy debris and mess? It was your friend and mine, Pastor Anglin. He looked around and he asked how I was doing. He listened, he understood, he talked about helping, he prayed with me. He reminded me that the Lord is our refuge and strength. I knew that, but it was consoling to hear it from him. His presence lifted my spirit. And as Larry said, Pastor went on to visit 60 families in our congregation's home had been devastated or hit by Sandy. And thank you, Pastor, very much for all of that ministry. Now, as Larry said, Pastor and he organized a group of volunteers, about 45 or 50 people. And so the Sunday after Sandy came, a crew of seven came to our home most for the whole afternoon. And more came days later, but these seven moved our rugs and our furniture, our cabinets and our appliances, 
Had to put them all out on the street. They were trash. But the most important job I had for them was to move around a thousand paper files which had gotten flooded with my thriving financial business office in our home. And there were many sensitive papers, much personal and financial information, including social security numbers. It all had to be protected. These soggy, heavy files were of no use anymore. They had to be carried by somebody into my garage a hundred feet away and to be locked up so that Thriving could get some secure transportation one day to take them all to Texas for a secure incineration. To carry these paper files, I needed people I could completely trust. And who better than St. Paul's volunteers? They just didn't do a great job. They did it joyfully, a messy job. But they made joyful noises, and they gave me a spiritual uplift, as only another Christian can do. To this day, I thank God for them and for all the 50 volunteers who helped so many in our congregation and in this community. While Rowena was still helping our daughter's family in Indiana, I needed to find a temporary home for us. And every place I looked or inquired, they were full. Again, the people of God came to the rescue. A St. Paul's member suggested that an apartment might be available at the Dominican Retirement Village in North Amityville. Immediately, I called the pastor. I asked if he had any contact there. He said he did. And I was able to lease the last apartment available for as long as Rowena and I needed it. We knew little about the place. But very quickly we learned that it was, a, it was very lovingly and caringly run by the sisters of St. Dominic. It was a perfect place. The sisters, the staff, some clergy, and all the residents, most in their 80s and 90s, welcomed us with open arms. We made many dear friends. We were lovingly known as the displaced persons. And all these caring people constantly inquired as to how the cleanup was going in our old house and how the search for a new home was progressing. And they assured us that we were in their prayers daily. We were living with the people of God, most of them devoted Roman Catholic Christians. They extended their love and joy in Christ to us and made us Lutherans like, feel like we really belong. They made joyful noises. Well, then there was our family and friends. They came through, too. Our family members came from New York and New Jersey and Indiana, together with other friends here from Long Island, to help us clean up the old house and get it ready to be sold. What an uplift they were. Even our flood insurance adjuster was a dedicated Christian. He was a Baptist minister from Texas who came to really be a friend. And he helped us with a lot of solid advice and got us the maximum amount our flood insurance covered. And he did it in record time, two months, without a hitch. Then our realtors, including our friend Patty Efron from St. Paul's here, gave us amazing help in the difficult task of selling our old home and buying a new one when we had little idea of what we were looking for. Miraculously, it all worked. What blessings all these people have been for us. Christ was working through them. Nevertheless, even though things have turned out relatively well for us, although what we went through is something we hope we never have to go through again, there are many people today that are still suffering, suffering as a result of Sandy. Some will never recover. We all still need to pray for them regularly and help them as best we can. 
Meanwhile, my wife and I are deeply thankful for all the help and joy all the people of God gave us, especially you from St. Paul's. With almost every step we took, someone from St. Paul's seemed to be involved in some kind of way. What a joy Christians can be for each other. My wife and I are humbled and uplifted by the help you gave. You made a joyful noise to the Lord. You served the Lord and people in need with gladness. Thank you. Amen.